Good morning, folks. There's another prediction of the sunspot cycle, more on Titan, a quick stop at the moon, and then a triple dose of disaster at the end. Let's start with our star, and starting as always over at spaceweathernews.com, we find 193 angstroms over the last day, bringing the southern coronal hole across the Earth-facing longitudes. Its solar wind is likely to arrive middle to end of the week, and should be relatively strong. We've got only one little C-class solar flare, and it did produce a little eruption, but it occurred on the departing south, the active region heading for the far side, eruption not aimed at Earth. Folks, we have a novel method to predict the peak amplitude of the sunspot cycle. May lose a style point for being late to the game here in the early months of the cycle after it has already begun, but indeed it is years until the maximum and this one predicts a slightly higher than cycle 24 amplitude. It's on the record. And we go to Titan. You know, if they actually get the dragonfly out there to Saturn's mega moon, it's probably going to find life, or at least evidence of previous life. This was widely believed even before the discovery of C3H2 in its atmosphere, we reported that last week, and since the craters of Titan and any spherical body are great places to find water and higher variation of elements, they do become a prime target for the Saturnian search, link below. Folks, we've got an excellent article on lunar dust fountains. Interestingly, they simplify it better than probably all the earthly electrostatic dust lifting papers, including the three we've seen in 2020. Lunar exosphere has potential, literally. Sliding next into the disaster stories, we begin with a new identification of the Lachamp excursion and a caution. Always good to find new identifications, but the caution is about the gregite contamination of the rocks and how it can confound efforts to identify and date the magnetic events. They say this not only applies to the short-term excursions, but the long-term cron reversals as well. It's a nice little nod to our isotope dating fiasco we've gone over in numerous videos. We're heading out to magnetars next because a huge element of our cosmic lightning idea involves the mechanism similar to what many believe happens on a magnetar. Now, while the polar fields of north and south can be measured, there is no direct way to measure the toroidal or arching fields making the donut-like fields around it. Some didn't believe the magnetar even had these low-level L-shell fields, but turns out they are indeed required, the subject of this paper. And for those who don't know, in the largest and rarest of solar blasts, our own L-shells might be at risk of performing the same action. While the solar wind particles are normally well deflected or satisfactorily coupled into the Earth's system, larger solar events can provide shockwaves that compress the outer field, sometimes orders of magnitude, and that's in the normal decadal and even centennial storms. But when the big cyclical event happens, the millennial event, the fields will be compressed while surged with energy and either side or straight down may serve as the best pathway, path of least resistance, for the shell plasma and that added by the sun. As it appears, the cycle is almost due from nearly all measurable account. Earth's magnetic field is doing the worst possible thing, including confounding these scientists as to why there is strange hemispheric and seasonal asymmetry to the plasma density above the polar regions. Like they don't know the Earth's magnetic poles are shifting as the field weakens faster and faster. They may not be able to account for it, but interdisciplinary catastrophism including geomagnetism, plasma physics, astrophysical patterns, and atmospheric electricity can for sure. It is less than 10 days until pre-order begins for the next end of the world. Imagine the 50 episodes and full movie we've done, explained in a book you can read in a day. It's coming. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.